agribusinesses are some of those things that will always be profitable. Why? Because people will always need food. Agribusinesses not only produce food, but they also produce a lot of things that are necessary in the cosmetic industry, in the medicinal world. So you'll always need stuff from agriculture. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the 21 top most profitable agribusiness ideas. So let's go through all of them and you pick which one you think would be best for you. Starting off with number 21 and that's medicinal hub production. Now not that I'm not talking about medicinal hub growing. This is production. So you get some medicinal herbs, maybe you're growing them yourself or you're buying them from somewhere. Take them somewhere in which you can process them. Now you can choose to process them in a proper developed factory or you can do it at home. A lot of these things can actually be done at home. You know, you sun dry them, get a few equipment to crush them and prepare them and you actually sell them on the market. Recently, a lot of people are choosing to go away from the more orthodox medicinal, you know, pharmaceutical drugs and they prefer the herbal things because, you know, usually they are more organic and people feel more connected to nature and a lot of people actually believe that they will work for them better than the things from pharmaceutical companies. So this is a very profitable business that you can choose to join. 20. Wholesale agriculture business. Now, this is one of the craziest. For me, where I am in Uganda, this is one of those crazy businesses where people make loads of money. People make millions and millions through this business simply because the prices can fluctuate a lot. I'll give you guys an example. A while back for us here in Uganda, I won't give you this in Ugandan shillings because that's when it makes the most sense. A while back, a kilogram of maize was at 600 shillings. And then a few months later, maybe seven, eight months later, the same kilogram of maize was selling for 2,400 Ugandan shillings. That's four freaking times the price. So if you had bought it earlier and then you sell it for four times the price, imagine how much money you're making, yeah? So agro business wholesale, usually the products, things like grain, especially grain, you can make a lot of money from the grain. Unfortunately though, it can also be the opposite, yeah? You can lose money very easily. You can buy and keep, hoping that the price is going to go up and it won't go up at all. So you can lose money very easily, but if you stay in the game and understand it very well, you can make a lot of money from it. Number 19, agro consulting. Now this is one where I've actually become an expert in. Already from the YouTube channel, a lot of people actually do reach out to me because they can see that I've started a farm that has been very successful. I've started actually different farms and farms for very many people and they have been very successful and they are very quick to recommend me to their colleagues who want to start farms. So agro consulting is actually something that's very lucrative where you can actually earn quite an amount of money without putting in too much effort simply from your knowledge and experience of course it requires that you've spent quite some time in the agricultural business or whatever business that you're doing and that you've built up an amount of knowledge and that you understand what you're doing because people are not going to come and consult with you when you don't understand what you're doing when you're going to fail their farms people want to come and get the best results from you so it's something where you can earn very lucratively without too much effort, simply having dividends coming off the effort that you've put in from your time of experience and practice and learning. 18, agro-blogging, stroke vlogging. Now this is another one where I've actually become an expert. As you can see, this is also an agro-vlog or blog. I share videos, so it can be blogging in terms of you writing articles, you know, you do blogs about whatever is happening in the field of agriculture, you write articles, you write market trends, or it can be vlogs where you do video content like I do right now on YouTube. I do video content and teach people different things about it. Now the advantage with it is that you get all the added benefits of blogging and vlogging are not just in the agro industry. So you'll get agricultural companies reaching out to you to advertise on your blog or to advertise on your YouTube channel like I occasionally do on this YouTube channel. Sometimes you'll get the platforms themselves paying you, for example, YouTube and Google paying you because of your blogs. So it can actually be very lucrative and you can actually earn thousands and millions of dollars every year simply by doing agro vlogging and blogging. So it's something that I would advise a lot of you people to actually go into and consider. 17 is herbs growing. Now we've already talked about processing of herbs, but the growing is actually another option, another idea. And the advantage with growing herbs is that you don't need too much land. Yeah? You don't need too much space. You don't need two, three, four acres. I actually have a neighbor very close to my farm who is actually doing herbs growing. Yeah. So on just a small piece of land, you can actually start growing herbs. And these herbs, you can either decide to process yourself or you can sell them 
to people who want these herbs or people who want to process themselves or who want to consume them. Sometimes the herbs can be consumed directly, even without processing. So it's very lucrative. A lot of people, like I've said, are moving towards the herbs direction and moving away from the more orthodox pharmaceutical medicine. So it's something I would advise you to consider in your location. Next up is organic crop farming. Now, the world is growing crazy about organic crops. It just keeps, you know, increasing and increasing and the market and the demand for organic crops just keeps getting more. Simply because, you know, the world keeps getting polluted, completely polluted. For me, where I am right now, you can see it's beautiful and nice and round, but in a lot of places, places are polluted. People are using fertilizers everywhere. People are using pesticides and all those things. And a lot of people actually want crops and food that's not processed, has no vaccines, food that doesn't have medicines, antibiotics. So a lot of farmers have actually gone into the line of growing food without medicines, without fertilizers, without vaccines, and these products actually sell for very high expenses. For example, if you're selling an egg from chicken that have been grown on pasture without vaccines and nothing, it will probably cost two times, sometimes three times the price of an egg that is grown in the more conventional way. So it's something that can be very profitable. Fifteen is agricultural equipment distribution. Now everyone in the agricultural industry is going to use equipment at some point, whether it's growing crops or growing animals. They're certainly going to need equipment. So how about you provide the equipment? I advise that you specialize in some form of industry. So if you're specializing in the poultry industry, specialize in the poultry industry. Or maybe you can go broader, you know, the animal industry. Whether it's the crop industry, maybe it's the tractors, you want to deal in tractors, maybe you want to deal in plows and things like that. You can specialize depending on the kind of industry because all these people will need equipment. So you can either produce the equipment yourself or you can market the equipment, you know, get it from people who are producing it, take it to your local area or your country and distribute it in that area. You can get very huge margins simply from equipment handling and dealing in equipment. Next up is frozen meat production and selling. Now this is another one which keeps getting bigger. Of course, since the world is reaching a point where people are getting richer, you know, people are able to get more money and hold more money. And when people are richer, they want to eat more meat. People associate meat with, you know, being rich. They want to eat better quality meat. They want to eat nicer meat. So this meat can be different kinds of meat. It can be beef, it can be pork, it can be goat's meat, it can be mutton, all the different kinds of meat. So you can get a farm, maybe a huge farm with grassland or a small scale farm where you don't need too much land, but you can grow grasses. Then you can use the grasses to feed your cattle, feed your goats and sheep, feed your pigs, you know, and use these to produce meat, which then you will cut, process, package and sell on the market very profitable. 13 is fruit farming. So fruit farming is a very, very lucrative one too because fruits are considered healthy generally. You know, people consider fruits to be healthy. So people are willing to pay a little bit more money for fruits each and every time. You know, with each and every passing year, fruits become more scarce, more complicated to grow, and they become more profitable with each passing year. So these fruits, you can either sell as fresh fruits, you package them, sell them as fresh fruits, or you can get them processed into powders, concentrates that can be exported to different countries and sold on different markets. They can actually become very profitable. I've bypassed farms, you know, where people have hundreds and hundreds of acres of fruit trees. Maybe it's mangoes, maybe it's oranges, maybe it's purples, whatever it is, it can be very profitable for you as a farmer. 12 is dairy farming. Now dairy farming is a very big one too because dairy products are used in almost everything. They are used in baking, they are used in cooking all kinds of things. Milk is taken as direct milk, milk can be processed into powder. So dairy products can come either from cattle and also from goats. It's not very common that you say it from goats, but I personally have visited some dairy goat farmers and I'll tell you the truth, from my personal perspective, I feel like the milk from goats is even tastier than the milk from cattle. And the milk from goats even makes better products like cheese, like yogurt, than milk from cattle. You can either choose to do the dairy on zero grazing or you can let it graze on pasture, on huge chunks of land. Whichever way you choose, you know, it's very difficult to differentiate milk which has been grown on pasture from milk which has been grown on zero grazing, you know, with concentrate feed. It's almost impossible to differentiate. So that's not one field where you're going to find a lot of people, you know, over specifying that, hey, I want this and I don't want this. But it can actually be very, very profitable for you. So it's something that I actually advise you to consider and get into. 11 is snail farming. Now, in my country, we don't do snail farming. I've 
never seen a snail farmer in my country, but I've seen it in so many different places. I've talked to people who do snail farming, and I'll tell you it's actually lucrative. If you're in an area where people actually deal in snail farming, they can consume snails because snails are actually eaten, or for cosmetic purposes, I advise you to consider it very deeply because it's very lucrative, very profitable, and it's actually a growing business. It's one that's slowly spreading around the world from the areas, for example, in West Africa, where they consume a lot of snails, to East Africa, where it's almost not there, but slowly starting to creep in. 10 is flower cultivation. So flowers are used in very, very many circumstances. You probably have given a flower to a lady, if you're a man, right here. Flowers are used for decorations at weddings, at parties. Flowers are used to decorate compounds and all these things. So getting involved in flower business is actually very lucrative. In a lot of environments, it can be quite difficult to grow flowers and very expensive. So, and in some places, flowers just grow easily everywhere. So if you're in such a place where flowers grow quite easily, it's just wise that you consider doing it. That way you can grow the flowers and sell them on your market or you can even export them. Flowers are some of those things which are very, very commonly exported. You know, they are grown in Europe. I know that, for example, the Netherlands grows a lot of flowers. Over here in my country, in Uganda, in the past, we were growing and exporting a lot and a lot of flowers. So this is also a business that you can consider and it can put loads and loads of money in your pocket. Nine is mushroom farming. Now there are different kinds of mushrooms, yeah? Some of the mushrooms are for home consumption. Some mushrooms can be used for medicinal purposes. Some of them are only used, you know, crushed and made in powder form and used for very complicated meals in high-end restaurants. So it only makes sense that people grow mushrooms and mushrooms just due to the fact that they are among our top tens, actually make huge profits. And it's quite easy to grow mushrooms, honestly. You don't need something very complicated. You don't need a very huge farm. You don't need 10, 20 acres. You don't even need two acres. You don't even need a single acre for you to grow mushrooms on quite a big scale. And they can be grown in a controlled environment. So mushrooms are actually very profitable and they can be sold either in a fresh form or in a processed form where you can dry them and have them processed in different ways and sold on the market for medicines and all those kinds of things. So consider doing mushroom farming. Eight is seed production. Now, this is is an interesting one because with each and every passing year it feels like less things are available in seed format for example if I bought maize and planted maize on my farm I will grow the maize and you know get very nice huge nice combs of that maize but if I choose to use the very same seeds from that comb and plant them again my yield is going to be very, very poor. And this is not a mistake, this is intentional. It's because the companies that produce seeds want you to go back to them for more seeds. They don't want you to plant the very same seed that you've harvested. In some countries, it's even illegal for you to plant your own seed. You need and you must buy seed from other suppliers. Is that it crazy, yeah? So with that happening, it makes seed business actually a very, very lucrative business because people will always need brand new seeds in order to get good yields. Uh, if you're going to use your very own seed to produce and then you're going to get terrible results, then what's the purpose of using your own seed? People will consistently buy new seeds. So I advise you to consider growing into the seed production business. Seven is fish farming. Now, fish farming is actually one of those industries which is exponentially growing and is expected to keep increasing in size and it's because you know in some places there's overfishing yeah and when there's overfishing there's a limitation and a restriction on, on how much fish can be picked up from the lakes and the oceans and so that means that people who actually concentrate on fish farming even in other areas which are not lakes and places like that will get a lot of money because if you're doing fish farming as a business, you're certainly not going to be overfishing your pond, isn't it? Yeah, you usually bring in the stock at the same time, get it out at the same time. And fish can be used for very many different purposes. It can be used as bait to catch other fishes. It can be used for producing oils, for cosmetic purposes, for food, for a lot of cultural things, depending on where you are. And generally, fish is very expensive. It's a very expensive animal. It's very expensive meat. And if you're involved in it, it's highly unlikely that you're not going to get money out of it unless you don't do the farming itself well. Next up is poultry farming. Now in poultry farming there are usually three main products. Number one, the meat from the chickens themselves. Number two, the eggs. And number three, the feathers. Now feathers are not very, very commonly involved in the poultry industry. So it's the two main ones. And did you know that 
chicken is actually the most eaten meat. There's a lot of chicken being eaten all around the world and in a lot of places it's actually the cheapest kind of meat on the market and that's simply because it's quite easy to produce and it's very profitable. It grows really quickly. In about five, six weeks you'll have a chicken ready for consumption. Eggs are used in almost everything all around the world. They are used in baking, you know, for making cakes, for making biscuits, for making a lot of cosmetic things. Eggs are consumed all around the world in huge numbers. And it's no mistake that I personally chose to join the poultry business. So it's something that's actually still just expanding because in a lot of places in the world, people are still not consuming a lot of chicken or any chicken at all. Some people will eat chicken once or twice a year, but that's changing and people are eating more and more chicken with each passing year. And it's something that I advise you to consider. Five, vegetable farming. Now, of course, people are getting really crazy about animal rights, growing meat and beef destroys the environment it's leading to global warming and all those kinds of things you're having a lot of vegetarian people recently and also vegetables are just good for your health so because of that a lot of people are involved in vegetable consumption a lot of places also don't have environments that are very conducive for growing of vegetables while in some other areas you'll just scatter throw seeds anywhere and vegetation will grow if you can see all around me you know the place is lush and beautiful and nice for us over here you'll grow anything and it will grow so if you're in such a place where you can just plant any vegetable and it grows up it blossoms how about you consider vegetable growing you can actually get a market where you even export these fresh and lovely vegetables for consumption in other countries number four is beekeeping now there are two main products from beekeeping number one is the bees themselves these bees can be used in pollination there are places where people grow agricultural products on very huge scales very huge areas but they don't have the insects that they need to pollinate them and so they will consistently keep buying bees to take them and use them to pollinate their crops but also bees are very good producers of honey is there anything else that produces honey? I don't know of any. Yeah, maybe they are there. But bees produce honey and honey is something that's consumed on the global market. Sometimes people use it to replace actual sugar. It doesn't make sense to me that you, instead of taking sugar from a sugar cane, you choose to take honey considering it to be more healthy. Does it even make sense? I feel like it's the same thing on the inside. It's all sugar. Anyway, some people will still consume honey and not take sugar. So just take advantage of that, you know, sell it to them. People will use honey for medicinal purposes, for all kinds of things, for sweetening products. It's used for making sodas, all kinds of things. So growing bees, on a huge scale or growing bees for purposes of producing honey is actually a lucrative business very lucrative so lucrative it even made our top five three pesticide production and distribution now of course this just makes sense with the way the world is increasing in population and the scale at which agricultural products are being produced and you know crops are being grown that means that there's more and more pests coming up and no one after putting in a lot of money into the equipment, the machinery, after plowing, after planting, getting the seed and everything, no one wants to lose their produce simply to a bug, to a pest. So a lot of people will keep buying pesticides. They have bought them in the past and they are going to buy them in the future. So how about you just produce these pesticides? Now, of course, producing pesticides is not easy. It's not an easy job, but you can also choose to go and do pesticide distribution. You distribute the pesticides, you get them from the producer, take them to your locality and redistribute them and get other people to come and buy them from you. You're going to make a lot of money off this. Number two, fertilizer distribution. Now, fertilizers are also another thing that are needed because when you keep growing crops on the same piece of land over and over and over again, the nutrients in the soil are going to get exhausted. It's, it's inevitable, yeah? These crops are actually getting something from the soil. So whatever they are getting is going to get exhausted. And so because of that, almost with every crop that's planted currently in this generation it is planted with fertilizer so how about you get involved in the fertilizer business the people are always going to need it it won't stop so just produce it and avail it for them and finally number one livestock feed production of course this is obvious livestock all these animals whether it's cattle goats pigs fish chickens they are all going to need feed so how about you get involved in the livestock feed production? Yeah, It's very lucrative business, very, very lucrative all around the world. 
and it will make you millions and millions of dollars. Just do your research, find out from your market. What kind of animals are the people in your area growing? If they're growing poultry, then start producing poultry feed. If they're growing fish, start producing fish feed. And a lot of it can be gotten from very easily available materials in the market. You know, just go out, buy a few materials on the market, come, compile them, put them together, maybe get a few equipment, uh, maybe a pellet making machine, a feed mixer, maybe a, a crusher, and then you're able to formulate your own feed and sell it on the market. It's very lucrative, very profitable, and no wonder it has made it to number one on our list. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell, that we never miss out on upload. Catch you very soon with another video. Bye-bye.